This is the Nothing Phone 2A disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. So as always, before we begin, the SIM tray needs to be removed. So looking at the SIM tray, I know it's hard to see, but there's a thin white rubber gasket. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the parts by overheating them. Here's a look at the plastic back plate or cover. If you need to replace the glass camera lens covers, those can be replaced by applying heat and prying those off. So you won't have to disassemble the phone or remove the back cover. At this point, there are 9T5 or Torx 5 screws which need to be removed. Here's a look at this plastic cover. This ring or circle sticker around the camera assembly needs to be heated up and pried off. There are five Phillips screws which are hidden underneath the sticker that have to be removed. There is yet another hidden screw underneath this sticker.
There's a flex cable for the glyph light or LED light on this side, which is still attached to the main board. There's also a metal plate covering it. Before we disconnect that cable, we'll first disconnect the battery cable. Looking at this plastic cover, we can see that an FC antenna located here. The LED flash is located to the right of that. And we have the LED lights or glyph lights. On the other side, we see the flex cable for the LED flash, the NFC antenna cable, as well as these three flex cables for the glyph lights. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. This is the bezel or border around the camera assembly. We can continue to disconnect the rest of the cables. The two coaxial cables on the right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single standoff screw which is holding down the main board. This is the 50 megapixel ultra wide lens. And this is the 50 megapixel primary camera. This camera has OIS or optical image stabilization, as well as EIS or electronic image stabilization. And there's copper tape behind this one to help transfer heat. All right, so looking at the main board, we see a secondary microphone on the top corner, some copper tape and graphite film over the shield to help transfer heat, as well as rubber gaskets around the connectors. There's also a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker on the corner. On the other side, we see the 32 megapixel front facing camera, the proximity sensor, as well as more copper tape and graphite film, and thermal paste to help transfer heat. Once that copper tape has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste, which is seated on top of the processor, and we see the RAM located next to that. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Moving on, we can see that nothing is full of surprises. For some reason, they love hidden screws. There's another hidden screw underneath this sticker. The two other ends of the coaxial cable, the fingerprint scanner or sensor cable, as well as this flex cable can be disconnected from the subboard. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off.
This is the 5000 mAh battery. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the subboard. The primary microphone is located underneath this covered shield. And there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. On the other side, we can see the SIM reader. So looking at the flex cables, this flex cable connects the main board to the subboard. This one is an extension flex cable, which connects the screen cable to the main board. And this flex cable is for the charger port. There's also this cable on this side for the power button and the one on the other side for the volume keys. So if you need to replace the screen, once you have access to this cable, you disconnect the screen cable from the extension cable. At which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You'd pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. There's a red rubber gasket around the charger port. At this point, there are two Phillips screws which are holding down the speaker assembly. Here's the speaker assembly, and there's a mesh filter over the opening of the speaker. Both the fingerprint reader and the vibrator motor are held down with some adhesive, so if you need to replace those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening for the speaker on the frame, as well as one for the bottom microphone and the top microphone. For anyone who accidentally inserts their SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, no need to worry on this phone since both the microphone and filters are seated above the hole so they won't get damaged. When it comes to removing the power button or the volume keys, if you only needed to replace the button itself and not the flex cables with the clickers, for the power button you'll just pull out this plastic holder in the frame and then it would release the power button. For the volume buttons, it would be this plastic holder, as well as this one. But instead, if you needed to replace the flex cables, you'd lift up and pull out this plastic holder, and this one. Now that this protective tape has been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber, which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put it back together.
Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.